well. Look what we have here. Another trial to determine if Kirigulia is truly a decent human or an evil cheater. I'm Emily, and today I will be the judge of this trial. I am not biased, I swear. Anyways, let's begin this trial. Continuing where we left off, we are introduced to Suguha, Kirigulia's cousin. She plays a vital role in the second half of the season, but not in the way you'd expect. We will get into that shortly. We cut back to Kirigulia, demonstrating the gym's benefits. They duel after, and Kirigulia gets utterly destroyed by his little cousin. How embarrassing. Oh yeah, she's very experienced in kendo, but that's irrelevant. Here's where things get weird. To the untrained eye, this scene looks completely normal, but to me, an adept viewer of anime tropes, I can dismantle what is precisely occurring. This may sound crazy, but Seguha has feelings for Kirigoya. Yup, his cousin. Weird. Let that sink in for a second. Maybe two more seconds. There you go. We have many more opportunities to discuss that topic, so let's move on. Kirigoya enters the hospital as soon as in. It turns out she has still not returned to the real world. Another game company is essentially holding her hostage in the birdcage. A man with a villain's voice comes in, his presence immediately dictating red flags. Please, you can visit whenever you like. I know it makes her happy. He was not the villain. A second person comes in. Sir. I'm Nobuyuki Sugo. It's a pleasure. Oh wait, that's definitely a villain's voice. We are introduced to Sugo, the man essentially holding Asuna captive. He is very polite and keeps his hands to himself. A very kind man and definitely not unhinged. Afterwards, Kiriguya sees a leak from Sir Agil himself, aka the best character in the series. The leak shows Asuna in a 144p photo derived from a game called Alfheim Online. Alfheim Online? Uh, actually it's pronounced Alfheim. This motivates Kiriguya to dive into the game and save her. Kiriguya, the cheater he is, equips his cheating fairy, granting him vast knowledge of the game and its mechanics. He even admits he's a cheater. I guess I'm not a beater anymore. I'm just a plain old cheater now. Unbelievable! What a bastard. The mods should ban him immediately. In fact, I will report his account right this second. After completing the tutorial, Kiriguya bumps into Lifa, who is totally not his cousin. Seriously, how the heck do they not recognize each other's voices? Not even how they behave. Bloody ridiculous. Kiriguya obliterates the enemies chasing Lifa, befriending her and heading to a neutral village nearby. After crashing into a building, Kiriguya arrives at the village, meeting Shinichi, Lifa's friend. But I don't care about him, so I won't talk about him. My ignorance of his presence won't last long as he interrupts the two before they head towards the world tree. You guys going on a mission? Can I come with? Ah, oh, corn nuts! I can't let these two talk! They might find out about each other! The last thing I need is Reckon telling my brother about the handy I gave him! Oh, wait. That's not it. I can't really prove anything yet. But there's a few things I want to look into some more, so I'm going to stay in Sigurd's party a little longer. There you go. After Kiriguya fails to cut a stone wall, the pair defend themselves against a group of salamanders, attempting to hunt them down. Just like when I play ADC in Smite, Kiriguya gets carried by his teammates' support. Kiriguya quickly inputs 
up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, transforming his body into a minotaur. Just like how I feed the enemy jungler, the salamanders feed Kiriguya, leading to their demise. Talk about a jungle diff, huh? Immediately after annihilating them, Kiriguya scams the soul energy he left alive, intaking important information regarding the purpose of hunting them down. After Kiriguya attempts to bite Leafa's fingers off, she finds out a potential war between multiple factions could occur, redirecting the pair to where the alliance is being held. They barely make it in time, disrupting the war from happening by dueling the leader of the salamanders. He combos the heck out of the leader, obliterating him just like how I zero to death my opponents in Guilty Gear. Eugene, the leader, withdraws from the field. Kirigaya befriends the two other clans, gaining their assistance with clearing the world tree. Fast forward to episode 21. Yeah, we don't talk about episode 21. We can just skip that. Yep. Episode 22 opens with Yui sensing Asuna's presence, causing Kirigaya to quickly fly towards the world tree. He becomes determined, striking the invisible barrier multiple times with no success. What an idiot! Kirigaya rushes to the entrance of the world tree, entering the gates. Just like how I failed to attempt to look cool by fighting the enemy team alone, Kirigaya miserably fails to reach the top, becoming a skewered fairy. Leafa saves Kirigaya from the death timer, exiting the world tree. She resurrects him, attempting to persuade him not to pursue the world tree once more alone. This is where she learns Kirigaya's true identity, becoming engulfed in emotion which causes her to log out. Kirigaya rushes to Suguha in the real world in an attempt to bridge a conversation. Still, in a heightened emotional state, Suguha lets loose on Kirigaya, an awkward atmosphere and brewing between them. Can we talk about how Kirigaya maliciously manipulated her heart in such a manner that she was heartbroken not once, but twice? Sure, it may have been unknowingly, but he was dense enough to not notice her voice, mannerisms, and overall behavior. Has he ever entered her room before this? He could have seen the console she uses. Unbelievable. What a bastard. They log back in the game shortly afterwards, dueling for whatever reason. Sure. Let's waste some more time that could have contributed to saving Asuna. A little side note. I absolutely adore the instrumentals in these fights. They're very well made. I suggest you check them out yourself. Alright, back to the fu- Oh wait, it's over? What the heck? Okay then. They make up, meeting with Shinichi. I have no choice but to care about this nerd again. They team up on advancing the world tree, making decent progress until the plot is like, Oh no, you don't. We need some intensification here. Remember the two clans Kirigaya and friends had befriended? They miraculously rescue the pair, attacking the foes before them. This grants Kirigaya an opening for the next section of the raid. He pulls out an extremely convenient blast attack thing that pulverizes the enemies, leading him directly to the next area. Kirigaya reunites with Asuna, which leads to a nice, heartfelt moment. This moment, however, is suddenly interrupted by Sugo, who drags them into some weird dark world. He uses gravity magic to keep them on the ground, going on a tangent about how cool he is. The next part gets extremely weird. If you want to check it out, feel free to, but it's a very uncomfortable watch. Skipping ahead to where I'm comfortable again, Kayaba makes a surprise appearance. 
That's right, the creator of SAO. He motivates Kiriguya, engulfing his body in determination. Kiriguya activates his cheats. For once, I agree with him cheating here 100%. With a bright smile, I gleefully watched as Sugo got utterly outclassed in a duel, suffering real life damage due to the pain setting being manipulated by Kiriguya. He wins the duel shortly after, leading the couple to log out. Kiriguya rushes to Asuna in the real world, unexpectedly bumping into, you guessed it, Sugo. He has come for vengeance. Wow. The plot really doesn't want them together. Kirikuya uses his beta skills in the real world, dodging imminent death twice before snatching his knife and almost being overtaken by rage. Luckily, he gained control of himself, sparring Sugo and meeting Asuna for the first time in the real world. That's all of Kirikuya's crimes for now. Shout out to Dukaroni for inspiring me to continue this series. I'll leave his channel in the description. You should check him out. Well, this looks like the end of the road. Wait, what do you mean there are three more seasons? Three more movies? What the heck? Oh no.